Welcome back to Bradley's Garage. Working on our 2013 Mercedes-Benz C250. Uh, if you guys come over here, take a look. We have a problem with the turbo coolant lines. If you, as you can see down there, I, I know it's kind of tough to see. I see blue coolant. Blue coolant is dripping. We have an O-ring here that we're gonna need to replace and an O-ring here. So there's two lines, basically an intake and um, in and out for the coolant. We're gonna remove that and replace those O-rings because we're dripping, if you can see down there, we're dripping coolant down into the, the belly pan down there. So we're losing quite a bit as the car is running. So let's jump into the repair and we have to take a few things off and we're gonna end up draining, you know, losing a little coolant and that kind of stuff, but let's get, let's get on it. All right, so first thing we wanna do is pull the engine cover. I always like to start in the back. You pull it here and you end up you know, breaking the front. So I'm just gonna set that up out of our way. We're gonna go ahead and grab the seven millimeter and we're gonna remove this here. Loosen that up. So we got that loose. We can go ahead and unlock the clip here. This is for the map sensor. Unlock it and just unplug. So that's out of our way. We can also unplug this little breather tube. That's just a push button there. And then we have this little factory clamp. I just put a little scratch all, kind of stick it in there. It kind of opens it up and gives the ability to separate it. And once it's off, then we can just use our little, our little hook tool just to kind of get it started. Slide it back. Okay. Put that out of our way. Then we'll, this will give us, there'll be a little bit more room uh, once we get the other side off. So the other thing that's holding it is we have a seven millimeter down here. So let's see if we can get our, our Milwaukee in there. If you reach down, you can feel the hose clamp. It's locked sideways. I think this is too long. Yeah, it's gonna to be too long. So we're gonna get a shorter extension. So you kind of just, uh, you're gonna to have to feel, you kind of do it by braille. Let me try to get some light in there for you guys. Okay, so you can see I have my, just a quarter drive with my seven millimeter, one inch extension. I'm just loosening the hose clamp onto the basically turbo inlet, so. I know it's difficult to show you, but at least you have an idea of where, where I'm coming in at, you know, basically right in front of the turbo there. Okay, so we have everything loose. We're gonna go ahead and get your hook tool. I wanna make sure that you break this free, this little uh, hard plastic line. This will pull out. Okay, that's out. This is loose. And then this one, we can just kind of pull forward now that we broke it loose. It will kind of stay onto that pipe. Okay. And then, I kind of just have to work it a little bit off of the turbo. Gosh, it is really stuck. Okay, we got it. Okay, so remember you have one more plug here that you're gonna have to unplug before taking it out completely. Of course, it has another lock. And push the tab back and then you can unplug it. Okay, so uh, the first step, what we wanna do is, we got the, our, our air pipe out of our way. We're gonna go ahead and get this, uh, this combination. This is sort of an air pipe and coolant pipe. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this in addition to the O-rings because I can see somebody has already done some sort of like sealant type stuff. So I'm, I'm concerned that that's gonna be a future problem. So since we kind of have to move some things out of the way in order to get uh, access to these o-ring pipes then we're going to go ahead and just replace this while we're here we're going to lose a little coolant anyway so let's jump on it you're going to get your e10 socket get this reservoir loose out of your way
Okay, there's one bolt there, another one here in the front. Uh, those are both the same size as you can see, so no need to worry. Uh, and I think we have, uh, well, we have one more in the front, so three holding it. Okay, all three are the same size, so that's easy. That just kind of gives us a little bit of room. We're gonna go ahead and we need to get this bolt out here that goes through the actual bracket for these two pipes. Okay, so we go ahead and just, uh, just kind of move the reservoir out of your way. And you're gonna access this bolt. I just put the socket back on, give you a little leverage. So if you get a ratcheting wrench, a little 12.8, it fits in there. Get that last little bit off. Okay, so that one's the long one that goes through. Now this will be free. We have to get our T25 here. Get these out. Got your long one, your short one. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this out of my way. This is a little bracket for the dipstick. It'll make it easier to have access to this hose clamp here. So we can go ahead and just wiggle that out of the little rocker cover, valve cover. Okay, next up you have your bolt holding on the bracket. And that, same E10 socket you've been using. Okay. Now that one's loose. Okay, let's go ahead and pop this off. Just pull up on the clip. And then same thing with this one. Just pull up, so these will be able to unplug. That's just for your reservoir. And then this whole assembly should slide back, but we might have to get it up out of the way first. So what I like to do is there's a little Torx here. I get my eight millimeter 12 point ratcheting and I just go ahead and loosen this. That's part of this bracket that's bolted to the cylinder head. So what I'm just doing is just giving a little bit of space so things can move around. And then next up, I'm gonna take this little recirc pump, the coolant recirculation. I'm just gonna take this off. That what that does is just gives us room to wiggle this pipe. So now that we have the bolt out of the middle part, we can kind of just lift this up. It just makes it kind of easier to go ahead and uh, separate this. You're gonna leak a little bit of coolant, of course, but not a problem. So now our hose assembly here is completely free. We just need to get the clamp off the backside there. I got some channel locks in there. I don't have those special trick tools to grab these ones. So I'm just gonna loose, loosen it out the old fashioned way. So, all right. Got our tube out. Yeah, I don't know why there was somebody put, uh, I don't know, goop on there. I don't, I don't see any evidence of it actually leaking, but uh, the good news is that the hose, the new one comes with the rubber attachment. So we don't worry, worry about this kind of single use zip tie and it's already just plug and play. So we got that off. Let's work on our turbo coolant lines. See how those come apart. All right, so first up is gonna take a couple of these E10s off that are holding the pipes to various mounting points. Basically the rigid mounts. Okay, so we have one there. There's one uh, down the middle of the two. Okay, 
Okay, we'll go ahead and get that one out. I think they're both the same size. Just lay it there. All right, so we go ahead and pull out our first one here. I just wanna see how much room is in, you know, I think it's enough because this is attached to a rubber line on this side. So we can kind of get that one out of the way. Let's see the bottom one. Is it, yeah, that doesn't move. So I think there's another, another bracket underneath holding it. So we're gonna have to go and pull off the bottom tray to see yet. Cause I don't have, I don't have any movement on that one. So it's definitely, let me see, where's the, uh, oh, I think I feel it guys. It's right. There's a bracket right there with the uh, Torx facing. Actually, it doesn't feel like a Torx. It actually feels like a seven or an eight. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel like a Torx. Okay, so maybe there's a little bracket. Yeah, let's see how, holding that one on. Yeah, because it's rigid, so I can't get that one off. I'm not sure which one's leaking, but we're gonna replace both of them just to be sure. I mean, I think, okay, so uh, it looks like the hard pipe, the lower hard pipe is actually uh, plugs right into the block. So it has another uh, E10 bolt holding it into the block. So I'm gonna try to take this heat shield off, see if we can get better visibility. So I, my goal is obviously to show you guys exactly what we're trying to do here. So let's get this heat shield off. That's like another little heat shield for the turbo. Jeez. Okay, so what we're talking about is the other hard pipe, the lower one, goes right here. And so we, we're trying to get access to this uh, E10 bolt right there where my screwdriver is. So like you can see, it plugs right into the side of the block. So let's see what we can get at there. I might be able to come in behind that exhaust manifold just with my little eight millimeter and get it. Okay, now that we got the heat shield off, we can see the access. I'm gonna point it at with my screwdriver. That's what we're, we're shooting for right there. If you can see that, I know it's tough to see guys. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our eight millimeter. We're gonna come from behind the manifold and get our little ratcheting eight millimeter on there. All right, so I'm just gonna get a little 12 inch extension on there and push down. Ah, yeah, there we go, broke it free and unscrew it the rest of the way with my fingers. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Don't you love that sound when it goes clink and hits the ground? Oh, it's such a great feeling. Okay. Now we can get our hands out. All right. So we go ahead. Now that we got the other bolt out of the engine block there, now we can go ahead and just take both of them out. And then there goes the rest of the coolant. And we can bring, we can bring this out. And as you can tell, we got one, two, and then our third one, which is we're gonna access from right there. We'll get our pick tool and take it out. So just get your little hook tool. Oh, as you can tell, no wonder it's leaking, guys. It's completely just brittle. It's just breaking apart. So that explains why we're leaking. This is the one on the block side. That one was not leaking that we could tell. You could see how it's, oh, it still has a little bit of elasticity. So that one is actually not bad. Okay, and let's go ahead and go in the car. We gotta get the, the one out of the car in the car since this pipe is still connected. There's no reason for us to unhook anything else. So get in there. That one, oh, that one's actually bad too. 
So this is on the turbo side, so I can imagine why it's bad. This is, you know, an insane amount of heat. So as you can tell, that one just split right open. All right, guys, so uh, we got our new O-rings. These are direct OEM Mercedes. Of course, we'll leave the part number in the description below, a link so you can buy them. And so let's go ahead and get them installed. And we can just double check that uh, they look the same. They actually look a little, a little fatter, which is nice. Maybe the other ones are a little broken down. And I just like to use a little, this is like uh, what plumbers use for uh, um, pipes and stuff. So I'm just gonna put a little of that on there. The most important thing is that we don't want any, we don't want this to snag in any way, shape or form uh, going into the metal. So plus it just gives us a little, little lube there. Just makes it easy for it to slide in. Yeah, see that's how, the, you know, you can tell it's nice and new. It's got good elasticity. And then the last one, we'll lube it up and we'll come in here. This one you have to reach in and kind of just slip your finger in there. Okay, all right, now we're ready. Just remember, uh, I believe the, the bottom one was, uh, let me see. Yeah, the bottom one was, was in first. The top one has another bracket and then the bolt goes through and holds both of those and puts pressure, keeps all of this in. So let's go ahead and fish this down in and get it reinstalled. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and feed this right back down in. It's just a little tricky to maneuver it. I think I kind of went like this towards the back, come underneath the turbo housing here, turn the corner, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get it started in the cylinder block. At the same time, you get it lined up here in the lower hole, okay? And then you're just gonna just slowly insert it and it kind of clicks into place, all right? Then we gotta get our hand. <sighs> this is the fun part, get our hand back down in there. All right, so I'm just using my left hand. I'm gonna stick it, uh, stick the bolt in and you're just, you gotta be good with your fingertips here. Wiggle that tube a little bit. Okay, easy now, easy now. Wiggle a little more, up, up, pull up, there you go, down. Up, easy, slow, down a little bit. Not that much, halfway, there you go. Thank you. All right, I'm just gonna do it as much as I can with my hand, because remember, we only have a limited amount of space to get our wrench in there. Okay, so I got it snug. All right, and then uh, get my eight millimeter. Okay, get in here. I'll go ahead and uh, pull up. <clears throat> I just pull up as hard as I can. Call it good. So now we're back up top. We have to uh, pull this forward a little bit to get it behind the, the bracket get it into the slot, and there we go. Like I said, you loop it up with the silicone, it's gonna just slide right in that hole. Nothing to worry about there. And now we can get our bolt started here in the front. Grab our socket. And get it nice and snug. Before we tighten it up completely, go ahead and get this one into place. Everything should stay lined up, but you know, just to make sure it's in there. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and snug this one down.
Okay. I'd say that's about 20, 20 foot pounds. You don't gotta go crazy. You just remember uh, it is, well, that actually might not be aluminum. The, that's actually a cast block. So, all right, now we gotta go ahead and get our heat shield back in, but let's just go ahead and tighten this one while we're here. All right, okay, so uh, now we're gonna get uh, this uh, heat shield. We know it was kind of a little difficult to get back, to get out, so we know we're gonna have a little bit of fun trying to get it back in. Can't remember the angle. That's something to do with like this, right? We kind of had it up here like this, and we kind of pushed it in. And then this one, we kind of pulled out. Pretty close. Basically something like that, right? Okay, so we got that lined up. That one's gonna go, that's gonna go. And then we have this one down here, down low. Okay, I think that actually that was a lot easier than a lot easier than taking it out. So we'll get our bolt started here. Try to get it at the right height. Oh, you have to kind of push down a little bit. It's, that's why it's shoving it up. We have one here. The top. Get that one started. That one here. Just remember all this uh, is threading into aluminum. So things just need to be snug. Don't over tighten it. And then we have the one down here. You have to kind of just feel for the, the little hole. It's, can't really show you guys, unfortunately. All right, and then we have uh, one more here at the dipstick. All right, I'm just gonna get a long extension so I can kind of put it into place, maneuver it, get it started, thread a couple turns. Okay, and then we have one more right here on top. Tighten these up. Can't really get my Milwaukee in there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use a swivel. You gotta just feel for it down there. Check. Everything feels good. All right, so on the bottom of this little turbo shield, there's a 10 millimeter, so I just have a little one inch stubby with a 10, and I'm gonna go ahead and cinch that one down. Okay, so we're back on the top. Let's go ahead and get our new uh, uh, coolant tube slash air intake tube. Let's get that back on. We got ourselves uh, our brand new Mercedes-Benz brand. I don't mess around with aftermarket. I don't even know if anyone makes an aftermarket, but I mean, they might, but why play games with aftermarket? Okay, you get your new O-ring. You get your prefab. Uh, rubber hose that's already clamped on. So basically everything is ready to rock and roll. So let's go ahead and start in the back and get it hooked up with the hose clamp in the back. So we're all the way down. You just wanna make sure you're touching, the hose is touching those two tabs. So then we'll go ahead and get our clamp and we'll try to get the clamp back over the hose. Like I said, if I had the, I make these trick pliers that work with these clamps but unfortunately we don't have that so if you guys know what those are that work perfect you know go ahead and comment below and let us know where we can get a set because obviously we need to get some all right uh come over here uh lift this hose up for me a little bit i need a little bit more room in order to get that 
get my channel locks on there. Pretty good. I'm gonna go just a tiny bit down, tiny bit lower. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we got that hose clamp on. Now our other points are gonna be here with our little coolant recirculation pump. So we're gonna go ahead and push that back in. We know that we have to get between this. Okay, so clicks on and we're good. And we'll make sure we're lined up in this bolt hole here with the long bolt. And then we're in our rocker cover, valve cover. Okay, so that looks pretty solid there. All right, so we're gonna get our long bolt, our through bolt we call it. We're gonna stick that in and see Oh yeah, we did good because we're threading in. So that means our hole is lined up and we're in position. So got that. Grab our little eight millimeter ratcheting wrench. Snug that down. Remember you have this one that we cracked a little bit for to give us a little bit of room. Okay, so before we get that mounted, we need to get the lower bolt back here into our little recirculation pump. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and remount our power steering reservoir. So we have the three. So we'll get the top one started. Make sure this one is lined up. Okay, we're looking good. And then we got one down here towards the back side. All right. Okay, now we can go ahead and uh, replug in the coolant reservoir. Okay, you should just hear a click, make sure that clamp goes down. Same thing with this, you heard the double click on this, that way we know we're in there all the way. Now we're ready for our T25 Torx. We're gonna put these guys back in. So don't forget your little breather line there that uses the long one. Okay, then we have a little a uh, dipstick bracket. That's gonna be one, the other one. And then the other short one goes here on the back side. All right, so we just have the one more bolt that we need to put on that holds the tube in up top here. Now we're ready for the air intake tube. So we got that assembly off earlier, so let's grab it and put it on. Uh, if you want, it's a good time to replace it. So since you've taken everything apart like we've done here, yeah, it's just another common maintenance item because that, uh, I'll show you guys the, like on ours, 
this is a very common uh, failure point. So you can see there, that's gonna leak. You're gonna get an air intake leak. So you'll get like a, a, a lean code because you're getting air after the map sensor. So it'd be like a P0171 uh, uh, is a common one. So uh, we have a new one, brand new Mercedes. We'll leave the part number in the description below, link so you can get it. We, got, we buy all our stuff from FCP Euro uh, because they have a lifetime guarantee on all the products. So um, that way, if this ever fails, if anything ever breaks in the future, then you get a new one at no cost. You send this one back and they uh, credit your account. So go ahead, I'm just gonna loosen these up make sure they're all the way loose so we have as much stretch as possible. All right, so we have our new air tube here. I'm just gonna put a little uh, silicone spray. Just to help it slide on. Over the turbo is a little, a little stiff sometimes. So we'll get our hose down. And just remember, you have to plug in this first connector before you get too far along. So make sure and plug that in and then push in your lock clip. All right. And then so we're just kind of lining everything up. We can do a little, little spray on that one as well. It helps line things up. And we already, st I already stuffed that one in. Sorry, I didn't show you guys. Uh, so we're gonna just go ahead and work this one in first. Okay, and then this one, the little red one goes here. So we just get that one lined up and then the air box is easy. We can do that anytime. Uh, so turbo, you can kind of just look underneath the assembly here, the, the uh, power steering and you can kind of uh, get things lined up as you're pushing forward. Make sure everything is there and not binding. I'm gonna go all the way forward. And then you're just work, like I said, you're just working it onto that turbo. Okay, it's nice. You're gonna press all the way here, all the way up. And then this is gonna click on, click into place. It's already there. This one, we're gonna go ahead and just finish pushing it in. Okay, and then we have this, our little one that we took the clamp off. Um, we're gonna see if we have another little uh, extra clamp or see if we can get the other one back on and recrimp it. So we'll play with that one in a moment. We have this all the way up. As you can see, there's a little arrow lined up with the two dots. So we know everything is nice and straight. We have our air box here. Get it onto there. We'll get this one cinched down. All right, so if you come take a look over here, you'll see down underneath there, we have it all the way flush with the turbo housing. So you just wanna make sure that rubber hose is all the way against the kind of the rough turbo. You don't see any smooth um, pipe there, so. It's all the way on. So for the turbo, you need to get your quarter drive one inch extension with your seven millimeter. And then it's kind of just by like, you know, by braille, you can't really see it. So get it connected here and then just start ratcheting it. It's just in a tight area, so it's a little tricky, but downside of loosening that clamp all the way is you have a lot more to tighten, so. But like I said, you can only move an inch at a time, so it takes a little while. All right. Got that tight, everything looks good. We can plug in our map sensor here, push the connector, push the lock. All right, let's play around with this and see if we can Reuse that. 
Okay, so you can see, hopefully we just kind of un unclipped it. So if we can squeeze it and get this to pop over, we might be able to reuse it again. So let's, you know, make the attempt. If not, then we can always just throw a regular hose clamp on there. No big deal. Well, it worked. Got to just play with it a little bit. But you can actually reuse it. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little with my dikes here just to tighten it up just a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we're just going to do a final check. We have all of our sensors, hoses, Clamps, everything's good, tight, tight. Heat shield, dipstick, put all our things back in. We don't have any leftover parts, so that's a good sign. And we're gonna go ahead and put our engine cover back on. Just line up the oil filler and dipstick, and you can kind of press down on those four places. Uh, next up, we gotta go ahead and open up our expansion tank, and we gotta start uh, getting our coolant ready. So we got our distilled water. We're gonna grab our Mercedes coolant and we're gonna mix it 50-50 and we're gonna start filling it. All right, so we got our Mercedes approved coolant. And we got our half gallon already ready. So I'm gonna top this off, give it a little shake, mix it up a little bit. and start filling. Okay, so I filled it up uh, basically to the cold line, which is just underneath the, the black lip here. We're gonna go ahead and start it up. And then you're just gonna wanna go ahead and turn the heater to max, open up that heater valve, make sure all that coolant is circulating through the system. It's gonna take a, a little, a few minutes for everything to uh, warm up. Um, you can even uh, put the cap back on, take it for a spin a couple times around the block, and then come back, let things cool down a little bit, and then you're just gonna double check, make sure your, your level is there. So we just wanna do that initial uh, startup. Go ahead. And like I said, open up that heater, make sure everything's circulating, and then we wanna make sure and top off anything before we go on that little uh, test drive. So you see it pulled in a little bit of fluid just from you know water pump spinning. elevated on you know ramps right now so it does give a little bit better uh, any air bubbles and stuff so it makes it a little bit easier for things to come out when the front's uh, slightly elevated so uh, we feel good we're at the right level all right we'll go ahead and put the cap on take it for a spin around the block get things warmed up to normal operating temperature come back, let it cool off a little bit, and make sure we're at the right level. One more thing before we go on that drive and get everything nice and hot, I like to just go ahead and rinse off any residue because we did spill a little bit of, uh, of coolant in various places. So I just want to give it a quick, quick little blast underneath there to rinse off any, any coolant that dripped down. And we already, we already dropped that lower pan, so we went and cleaned that up already. So take it for a drive and then come back and double check those levels. Okay guys, so we went for a drive, came back, made sure our coolant is topped off, so we're good there. So uh, if you guys need to replace your coolant pipe, this one is a little bit uh, you know, more common, more common done, but 
if you had the problem that we had where the turbo coolant lines, the O-rings were bad, you have those three O-rings there, then um, hopefully this helped you out with that. That pretty much refreshes the coolant system. Those are the, the obvious things that go bad on these uh, C250s, this W204 chassis, M271 engine. Hopefully it helped you out with your repairs. Be sure to check out the channel for other Mercedes C250. We've done a bunch of work on this car, so be sure and check it out, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.